This lecture is on Vesper theory. Vesper, V-S-E-P-R, stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. And it's based on the idea that um, electrons in a molecule are organized into domains. The domains repel each other and try to seek to minimize that repulsion. And so they orient in space that way. And that gives us an electron domain geometry. And once we know the electron domain geometry, we can then figure out the molecular shape. Luckily, the electron domain geometry is entirely a function of the number of electron domains present. So each electron domain is a hybrid molecular orbital. And we're going to be using this balloon to represent a single electron domain. So when you see a balloon like this, you want to imagine the central atom here, and then the bond axis will pass directly through the balloon, through the center of it, to the tip, where then you would find a peripheral atom, or a lone pair. So our simplest case is when we have two electron domains to worry about. So here you can see these two balloons are orienting in space so that when you draw in the bonds, the bond angle between them is 180 degrees. Right, so this angle right here. is 180 degrees. We call this kind of hybridization SP hybridization. And the electron domain geometry is linear. When you have three electron domains, they orient so that they are pointing towards the corners of an equilateral triangle. So here is our central atom. Here's one corner. There's another corner. And there's the third corner. So you could inscribe an equilateral triangle here. Anyway, the bond angle for all of them is going to be 120 degrees. We call this hybridization SP2. And the electron domain geometry is trigonal planar. Trigonal because the molecule is shaped like a triangle and planar because all atoms should be in the same plane when you have three electron domains. Now we get to the really interesting stuff. Here's a picture of four electron domains. There is this one here. Here's one. Here's one kind of hidden. And here's one on top. Okay. So you can see the central atom would go right in there somewhere. And then you'd have a bond axis pointing toward the center of each electron domain. I'll try to draw, draw it, but the perspective's a little bit awkward. And it turns out that each of these bond axes points perfectly towards the corners of a tetrahedron. Okay, so we call this electron domain geometry tetrahedral. 
and the type of hybridization that's present here is sp3. We'll talk about hybridization another time. But an interesting thing to note is that the bond angle between any two of these electron domains is equal to 109.5 degrees. So between this one and this one, it's 109.5 degrees. But if you compare this lower right corner with the top one, the angle formed between those two, that angle right there, is also 109.5 degrees. So any bond angle in this molecule will be 109.5 degrees. That is just a property of a tetrahedron. Let's move on to four electron, or sorry, five electron domains. Okay, and this is a little bit difficult to see. But we have the two axial domains. One is above, and here's the other axial domain below. And then three equatorial domains. This one's kind of pointing out towards you. This one's flat. You're looking directly at it. And this one is going behind you. So now the central atom is right there. And let's draw the possible bond axes. There'll be one going down, one going up. one going back to match the electron domain that's behind you, one coming out at you in 3D, and this one pointing to the left. Now we have two different kinds of bond angles we have to worry about. The bond angle between two equatorial domains is going to be 120 degrees. just like it is for a trigonal planar molecule. However, if you look at the bond angle between axial and equatorial, that's actually a 90 degree angle. So that's a 90 degree angle there. That's a 90 degree angle. Between this one and this one, those are both equatorial. So again, that's 120 degrees. Okay. And then between the two axial domains, it's 180 degrees, like a linear molecule. This type of hybridization is called sp3d. And the electron domain geometry is called trigonal bipyramidal. And it's called trigonal bipyramidal because this shape really looks like two trigonal pyramids that are stacked base to base. So I could inscribe um, two trigonal pyramids on this diagram if I wanted to. So there's a leading edge of one, there's the bottom edge of it, there's a trailing edge of it, there's another edge, and there's another edge. So that's the pyramid on top, and then there's also one on the bottom but you can't see the third face of it. So that's why it's called trigonal bipyramidal. So now uh, let's look at the case with six electron domains. Here they are. You have two axial ones above and below. Those are your two axial electron domains. And now you have four equatorial electron domains. There's one there and one there. Those two are coming out at you. And then these two are behind. The central atom is here. It's got a bond axis going up and a bond axis going down. And then it's got two coming out towards you. and then two going away from you. So um, 
this type of hybridization is called sp3d2. And the electron domain geometry is octahedral. And that's because the bond axes point to the corners of a regular octahedron, which is two square pyramids stacked base to base. So I can inscribe that octahedron on this diagram for you. There's a leading edge, there's a leading edge, and there's a leading edge. There's the bottom corner, and then the other sides are sort of behind and difficult to see. but. Anyway, there it is. Anyway, those are the electron domains. Once you know the electron domains, you can figure out the molecular geometry. Thanks for watching.